Most Innocent takes place in this really unique kind of world here where one of the characters is a bear and there's other animals. It's kind of fantasy style. And in this game, a crime has been committed and you are trying to solve this crime. But unlike a lot of games like this, like Clue, it's a cooperative game. Everyone is working together and everyone has their own set of their own solution. So in this case, someone will ask a question. I'm going to answer the question of the person on my left. Let me show you a little bit about how it works. In this game, players are going to play a scenario. There's a whole book of scenarios and each scenario will have a, a board that it uses. So this is one of the boards. The boards are going to vary and it's going to use a certain number of clues. So at the beginning, you'll start with four decks of clues, crime, evidence, victim, and scene, but you can add offender and there's more cards that can add it to the deck. A scenario will also give you, depending on the level you want to play, a certain number of these clue tokens and almost innocent tokens that you will have. Each player is going to get their own board, and so you'll mark off anything that cannot be one of the things here. So, for example, you'll see I have all these black squares marked off. Then you're going to draw a card from each deck. Now, this card, these cards are the solution for the person to my left. So, the person to my left is trying to figure out the place, which is the lighthouse. So I'm gonna secretly mark that on my board down here. There, here we have the croaking guard is the culprit here, so where's the, or the victim. So they're over here. I drew spicy tea as my evidence. So spicy tea there. And curse, I will put right here. So those are the things that the person next to me is trying to figure out. Each person is going to have a big player shield that you're going to cover your board with. And then players are going to take turns using up one of these tokens. So in a smaller game, you have fewer tokens. So you can use these in different ways. So for example, on my turn, I can say how many of my answers are in row four or column C. I can say whatever I want, but whatever one I ask, each person will truthfully, because it's a cooperative game, give an answer to the person on their left, because that's the person. So I say, hey, to the person on my left, you have two. The person over here says, I have zero. Oh, great. Now I know I don't have anything in that row. Well, that's kind of convenient, because I now know that I don't have these items. So my item is going to be this one, this one, or this one. You can also ask, using the other side of these tokens, and sometimes you can use tokens for either side. Sometimes the scenario decides what side. You can just say something like, is my victim in row two? Again, whatever question you ask, everybody has to answer. Now, table talk wise, depends on the level of the game. In a normal game, you can say, hey, I'm, I found my solution. Once everyone's found their solution, you start reading answers one at a time around the table. If anyone gets one wrong, you spend one of these tokens and you get another shot at it. But once these tokens are gone, you lose if you get them incorrect. Otherwise, if everyone gets the scenarios correct, they win. The game has many different things. It will eventually bring in special player powers. There's clues that can take up more than one spot on the board. There are special clues. There's a lot of different things going on, but that's the basic gist of the game. Almost Innocent starts off as a pretty basic deduction game. It gets more complex as you jump through the scenarios. And you know what? Normally I'm kind of opposed to campaigns. I don't really care about even a campaign here. Here I think you just jump forward and pick a scenario and it's kind of a level of difficulty. But at the beginning, it's pretty basic. I do like the idea of how many clues and I really, what I really enjoy about this game is when you ask questions, sometimes you're asking a question not so that you can get information, but that you can give information. And I like that a lot. Like in that example I showed, I'll pick that row and say, hey, two of your clues are in it. Now everyone else will hopefully get some information, but you're working together. There's not supposed to be a lot of communication between players other than answering the questions and what questions to ask. You can't be like, oh, I really wish I knew about column B, but you can also ask that. And it's really easy to um, adjust the difficulty by adding or subtracting those tokens because the more tokens you have, the more questions you can ask. If that gets too easy, bring it down but they start adding different curveballs. This is a really neat game. I'm very impressed with it. I love the look of it. Um, I like that the, the there's the boards and the, the everything just seems to work really well. It's not like a greedy, crunchy deduction game like the ones I really love, but honestly, 
The fact that it's co-op and things means this one's going to make the table. I enjoy it pretty much. That's a, an 8 out of 10, actually, for almost anything.